you know, I always, yeah, that's fine. A bit nearer, if you can. Mm, good. I'm so used to mics. You know, I always tell people to open their eyes slowly, but I can't. Uh, I have to give it a jerk because my eyelashes are too long and they stick. So they are just called to hold the oil in the lungs. So they can like grow up with the oil in the water for lungs to make you spark them up. Now, I've been asked, especially for the newcomers here, <laughs> to give a brief explanation on chanting. Yeah, I do be up at the specialty that I knew you had and for tell it a code on chanting. Aim rim cream chamundae vicheche. Aim rim cream chamundae vicheche. Aim rim cream chamundae vicheche. That is the rhythm. Now, the words don't have a meaning. What I but the words are destined to elevate the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It refines the atmosphere. Now, if you study the words, you'd find that the duration of the words is exactly of a duration of a person's thought. Det vil man finde, at ordenes længde er præcis den samme som en tanke. Now, you think that your thought lasts for 15 minutes or half an hour, it does not. Jeg tror, at jeres tanker måske varer for et kvarter eller længere tid, men det gør de ikke. The maximum a thought lasts it's a, is 8 seconds. Det længste en tanke kan vare er 8 sekunder. And then, after there's a gap, you continue on with that thought again. Now, have you seen a cinema film? Now, on the screen, you find continuous movement, like a person walking across from this side of the room to that side. And that is done because of the flywheel in the projector. Projector. Good. Uh, but the film itself is made up of frames. Scaffed as more. So you have a frame, then there's a gap, and then another frame, and then there's a gap. That's how a film is. So a film is really an object of small rammer, and then a middle room, and more rammer. And that is how the human mind works. Now the other advantage of chanting is this. That if you try it out, you will see that you are expelling your breath. You're not breathing in. Yeah, at uh Vicheche. You're breathing hot. Now the most important part in pranayama, or in breathing you can say, is expelling the air rather than inhaling. Den vigtigste del ved pranayama værtrækningsøvelserne og chanten er uh, faktisk udåndingen og ikke indåndingen. So if the expiration is complete, then the intake of air is automatic. Så so hvis udåndingen er fuldstændig, så vil indåndingen se automatisk. Now, this is also a part from uplifting the atmosphere. Uh, it also creates a rhythm within your own system. Mm. Yeah, because the chanting is rhythmic. Mm. And your expiration is complete. Mm. 
so naturally it will bring a rhythm to the body. Right. And when the body is brought to the rhythm, it also brings a calmness of the mind. Hmm. Now, um, the, the mind, or the body rather, is a continuation of the mind. The mind is of subtle matter. And the body is of gross matter. Mm -hmm. But it is a continuum. Now, for example, if you can picture to yourself uh, a large painting. Hmm? And let's take the color blue. And on one side, it'll be darker blue, and it becomes, you know, the painter would make the blue lighter, 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 lightest. You can, for example, take farm hmm? blue. Og så maler maleren den venstre side af billedet blå, og hen imod højre bliver farven lyser og lyser. So that is how the body you can compare with a darker blue. Så so der kan du altså uh, sammenligne kroppen med den mørke hmm? del af blå. And the mind you can compare with the lighter blue, og being se, subtle. Og se det, fordi det er så And you must do nine rounds. I stand every quarter. So because it takes about three rounds to get into it. Mm. Another great benefit you will find, you know, after you've practiced chanting, that you feel you are not chanting, and the chanting is going on automatically. En anden fordel, som chantingen også har, det er, at når man har chantet et stykke tid, så vil man finde, at man chanter automatisk. Man har adskilt sig selv. Så so with practice, you become the observer of the chant. Når man lidt øvel, så kan man begynde at observere chanten. Mm. And that will gradually teach you how to discriminate between the small eye and the big eye. Og det vil med tiden give jer en, en fornemmelse af, at man kan kende mellem det lille og det store. If people, rather than getting involved in their thoughts and emotions, hvis folk i stedet for at være involveret i deres hmm? and if they can observe their thoughts and emotions, the power, the hurt of the thoughts and emotion will diminish. Så vil tankerne og følelsernes indflydelse på os er menneskes. You see, so it has so many, many great benefits. Så so chanting har mange, hmm? mange. And, and especially when a group is chanting together, it creates that oneness. Så specielt når der er en stor Which is, which is very important. Som er ret vigtigt. Because we are a family. For vi er en familie. Hmm? And uh, in a family, there should always be, although not, it's not necessarily so, but there should always be love for each other. So it promotes communication, relationships, and love. So it promotes communication, relationships, and love. Now that is the value of chanting, put to you very briefly. So this is very short for that. You know, one day, I don't know where it was, perhaps in St. Louis or Chicago or somewhere, and I was given a room, my room was upstairs. For a time, I thought it was in Chicago, I got a room on the first floor. And I heard the housewife chanting downstairs, and the sound was floating up to the room. So we are hearing this morning chanting in the corner, and the sound was going up. So I was very impressed to start off the day uh, with a chant. 
So when I came downstairs, I told the lady, one of our meditators, so da jeg kom nedenunder på talt ved dagen, som var en af vores meditationer. So this is very, it's a very nice way to start the day. So she tells me, uh, Guru Raj, I must be honest with you. You see, what I do, she says, that I do one round for a soft boiled egg and three rounds for a hard boiled egg. Jeg bliver nødt til at være ærlig over for dig. Grunden til, at jeg gør det, det er, at en lille runde, det svarer med to kopper, men tre runde, det er et hårdt Good. Now, what shall we speak about tonight? Spørgsmål. Skal du have I will ask this question, uh, in a way, for my girlfriend, Bente. Mm -hmm. I feel as... Where she's sitting? Ah, lovely. You are very beautiful. Well, I feel myself as a part of the question, so I will... Well, if you're a part of her, then you must be part of the question. Beloved yeah. <laughs> Guru, how, how do one know or recognize that that you meet your, your twin soul in this life? Mm -hmm. Spørgsmålet drejer sig om uh, det, man kan kalde tvillinge sjæle, folk som inkarnerer på samme tid med hinanden. A twin soul, the idea of a twin soul is a fallacy. Hele ideen om, at der skulle findes tvillinge sjæle, er ikke korrekt. There is no such thing as a twin soul. Der findes ikke sådan et begreb som tvillinge sjæle. You can be classmates studying in the same class, for example. You can for example be class comrades in the same In the various aspects of life. But one thing is very sure, and it is this, that, say, in a previous life, you had a very deep bond with someone. Men det kan altså gøre, at man i tidligere liv har. And after, when you die, you just leave this body behind. Mm? But uh, the soul carries on into a different dimension. Så bevæger sjælen sig videre, blot i nærmest. Now you must understand that there is a difference between soul and spirit. You must understand that there is a difference between soul and spirit. The soul is a mixture of your mind and spirit. It is a blending of your mind and your spirit. And with the mind being there, superimposing on the spirit. Or sitting there. Super. Superimposed, be above, we're mixed up in the spirit. Over, we're yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then the mind goes with all the impressions and all the experiences you have gained in life. So sinne fortsætter med alle de oplevelser og erfaringer som I har And all uh, impressions are forms a bondage. Og alle disse indtryk former et en længe bånd. Ja. So, if there is a total strong bond between two people, så hvis der er et stærkt bånd, then in their next life, be sure to know that they will meet each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see, within nature, there is no such thing as accident. You see, in nature, there is no such thing as accident. Hmm? Everything is systematic. Everything is systematic. Hmm? And it is systematic because it works according to the laws of nature. It is systematic because it works according to the laws of nature.
It's only when we have a body, you know, that our minds start swirling around, you know, and becomes confused, uh, uh, that you would find things that you would call accidents. Det er kun så længe vi er i kroppen, at mens vores sind er forvirret, at vi trukker der, der, at vi uh, finder forvirret. Because you can only attract what you deserve. For du kan kun tiltrække det, som du betjener. Divinity never gives you what you want, but divinity gives you what you need. Det er guddommelig, det giver dig aldrig, hvad du gerne vil have, hvad du, hvad du behøver. And that is how and nature functions. Hmm? People start demanding from God, throw me a million kronos on my lap. Hmm? Hmm? Or have a 20 room mansion. You will have it if you deserve it. Hmm? Or otherwise you will get according to your need. And the purpose of getting according to your need is that it is trying to evolve you. Because we are bound up in this force of nature that is always pulling you back home to divinity. Fordi vi er, hmm? vi er bestemte af denne kraft fra naturen, som altid forsøger at trække os tilbage ja. til Gud til, til vores hjem. And for that, we have to work out the impressions. Og for at kunne gøre det, så bliver vi nødt til at arbejde med vores hjem. That we call karma. Det er sagt. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Hmm? You can't sow onions and expect potatoes to grow. So, everything that happens is not by the will of God. He is just an energy. Hmm. It, is, it is a neutral energy. Hmm. So anything that happens to us or any circumstances we come into has been created by none other than yourself. Now the same principle applies to the women or the man that are in love with each other. Hmm? Because in a previous existence, there was this great deep bond. So, when your soul, which is to repeat the combination of mind and spirit, on the other dimension, it starts evaluating how you should be born and where you should be born. That divine energy being neutral does not do anyone any favors. It's the energy, the stable energy, the foundation of all existence. Det er guddommelig en stabil energi, som er fundamentet for al eksistens. Det er So, on the other dimension, your soul works out the future birth. Så so, uh, i den anden dimension, der uh, udregner eller vurderer sjælen, hvilket under hvilke And because the bond being so great between your beloved, she or he will also take birth at the same time you are born. Mm. In the same period, I don't mean on the same day or same time. Mm. I can give you examples 
of so many of our meditators. The one lived in South Africa and the boy lived in Australia and uh, they just met. They love each other, they got married, they got two children. Ja, jeg kan ikke lide et eksempel med to af de mediterende. Den ene hun boede i Sydafrika, og den anden i Australien. Og alligevel mm. mødtes de og har i dag to børn. And I can quote hundreds of cases like these. Og jeg kan citere flere hundrede tilfælde som det. Because of that bond, they get together. Never mind in what corner of the world you are living in. <laughs> now, if in a previous life there was no strong bond, then in this life you can find someone with whom you can form that strong bond. Hmm? And if it's strong enough, it will lead over into the next life. Og hvis det er stærkt nok, så vil det føre mm-hmm. der videre i et spille f- mm. Like in English, we have a saying that these two people are like two peas in a pod. Uh, man plejer også at sige på engelsk, uh, og den har jeg lidt svært ved at kringe. Nej, og hjælp mig. Er det som uh, 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 to sider af samme løg? Sådan noget, den stil. Mm. Have you seen... As you observe around you, that uh, a very handsome man marries uh, a plain-looking woman. Man ser nogle gange at en meget smuk mand gifter sig med en ret almindelig kvinde. Then people say, well, "What did he see in her?" That's Or a very beautiful woman marries a not so good looking man like me. I'm joking, I'm the handsomest guru in the world. <laughs> yes, and then we say, what did uh, she see in her? Hmm? One thing they don't realize, it is not the looks, but that inner bond that existed and playing itself out. Det som folk ikke er klar over er, at det er i virkeligheden det indre bånd, som udspilles. Many times um, people ask me, when will I find my soul mate? Der er mange mennesker, der spørger mig, hvordan kan jeg finde min sjælekammerat? There's no such thing as soul mate. Hmm? That soul, there only comes a soulmate if you have created that bond. Hmm? In a previous life. Hmm. And then through meditation, you will find everyone to be beautiful. Hmm? Just now we said an ugly, not good-looking man marries a very pretty woman. Hmm? So when you love someone, really love someone, you are not loving is the outer portion of the person. So mm-hmm. You are really loving the inner part of the person, the spirit. So remember one thing, that if you are very devoted uh, to your spouse, to you, the man, the boy, the beloved, så husk en ting, at hvis I er meget hengivende over for jeres elskede, you are loving God first, and then you are loving the person. Så elsker I virkeligheden Gud først, og så bagefter elsker I personen. Yes. So through our spiritual practices, we just don't look at the outward appearance, but we get the intuitive feeling of the person's inner self. 
Så gennem meditation, så lærer vi efterhånden at elske det indre i personen gennem vores intuitive sans. And that is the secret of an enduring togetherness. Yes, eh? In the Western world, you find uh, one divorce in every three marriages. In the Western part of the world, so we can find that there is one skillsmith for three ægteskaber. Why? Because the man would uh, look at the person's face only. Fordi man, man kun ser på and vice versa. Right. Uh, and the man might say, oh, she's got a very cute nose, or beautiful eyes, a lovely figure, and go, and go. Mm? lovely legs, or oh, something. <laughs> you see. And then, that, that is not love. It is infatuation. Hmm? It's infatuation, and that wears off. Hmm. If two people, people meet each other and says, I've fallen in love, I don't believe it. Hmm. There would be the first attraction. Because mm, the other person might have a beautiful mind, which is very similar to yours. Mm. Or talents or their ways, which you would love. Because this wears off to say it again. Wears off, rubs off. Mm -hmm. Love has to grow. Hmm? I tell you about myself. When I when I was young, that's I don't know, a couple of hundred years ago. <laughs> the um, system was this: that the parents arranged marriages. So was system at that time that they were parents who arranged marriages. I married for about thirty-seven years. And they got me married at the age of 15. Yeah. So they took me around and showed me various girls. And uh, the only thing I saw of my wife, never spoke a word to her before marriage. Yeah. They have a system, you're sitting in the lounge, and the girl that you want to see should bring in the tray of tea. Systemet fungerer på den måde, at man sidder inde i en spisestue, og det eneste man ser til pigen er, at hun kommer ind med en bakke med te. Yeah. And while she's putting down the tea, you got to really look at her. <coughs> so when we got home, I saw about 30 girls, but I liked this one that I married to. So, so just a glimpse. That's all. No discussion, no love making, and then marriage, hmm? which is the Western custom. Yeah, they first fall in love, and many of them they have uh, trial marriages. So, so there in Western, where man. But there, there's no such thing. And you'd be surprised that there's only one divorce in 25,000. Why? Because the two, although it's an arranged marriage, the two people start learning about each other. And then the love starts growing. Yes, eh? So falling in love is wrong. 
Falling means falling down. Mm. In love you don't fall, you get uplifted. Mm. So, these things come about much easier if you have a bond. There are many of you here that I've known in many lifetimes. I can see right through you. Yes. And that is why a mutual attraction exists. There are people around the world, and there are some sitting here, that would be prepared to give their lives for me. Mm. Mm. Because of this spiritual bond. If someone asks me, do you love? I say no. I am love. That is how people has to become. Sincerity, honesty, and a deep desire to understand the opposite person's motivation. Mm-hmm. And if you really understand the motivation, you would not um, uh, condemn the person. Mm-hmm. Because you are understanding. Mm-hmm. So, you also develop humility in the relationship. So du udvikler også ydmyghed i forholdet. Mm. Understand means to stand under. Forståelse, mm. understanding betyder at stå under. Now if you stand under, you express humility. Hvis du står under, så udtrykker du ydmyghed. Mm. And uh, humility is very is being very close to God. Mm. So your emergence with your wife or spouse is firstly on the spiritual level. So din sammensmeltning med din med din elskede foregår først og fremmest på det ord. Then the mental level and then the physical level. Derefter på det mentale plan og så på det fysiske. Many people don't even know how to make love. Hmm? They are just expressing lust. That's all. The physical release. Hmm? Hmm? Which is nothing, which is nothing like any biological action like going to the toilet. To really make love, there has to be mergence. Where the woman becomes totally oblivious of herself. And the man becomes totally oblivious of himself. And and what exists is this vast orgasm which touches every corner of the universe. Some knows. Yeah, because the man has lost his individuality in merging into the woman. And the woman loses her individuality in merging into the man. 